He that keepeth Israel never sleeps nor slumbers. He is coming back just like he said he would. He doesn't lie. He's coming back. Where is inheritance? Where the apple of his eye? He hasn't forgotten about you. He hears your prayers. He sees your tears. And he's coming back just like he said he would. Woke up in a world that is in turmoil. You live in a society that is broken. You're going to pass the torch to the next generation. The next generation, is it morally better or morally worse than this generation? We've all met people going through hard times. We've all met people that got life worse than us. This month, we're dealing with people that have been hurt by the church. The mental anguish the people are facing today is unbearable. There are people that can't take it no more. They're looking for rest. They can't sleep at night. Their souls are anxious and need rest. People have left the church after being hurt and have begun searching for something to quench their thirst, looking for something to satisfy their itch. Today, people are trying to find a new path, a new path to take to escape the pain of life. But the Lord said, stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your soul. But they said, no, we're not doing it. We're not doing that no more. I don't need to go to church. I don't want that restrictive God. I want something new. You woke up today in a world that is broken. Is the next generation going to be morally better or worse than this generation? Right now, we're facing bad times. Right now, we're currently watching biblical prophecies being fulfilled right before our eyes. You know what it means when the river Euphrates dries up. Meanwhile, God's people are running the new doctrine. The Bible said this will happen. Isaiah 30, 21, and thy ears shall hear a word behind me, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, all over the internet, that's behind you. All over social media, that's on your right. From your friends you meet on the left, you're hearing more and more about newfound spiritual doctrine that's coming up. But the Bible sends a warning. Look how merciful God is. He warned us by saying, woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel but not of me. The question I have is where do you get your counsel? What is your foundational source? It says, and that cover, but the covering, but not of my spirit. Whatever you're getting involved in, is that the spirit of God? The Bible says that's how you add sin to sin. Some people have begun to trust in their own morals. Who gets to determine morality? I'm here on assignment to, to contrast morality with salvation. The nature of morality is self-righteousness. You, within your own self, think this or that is right. You determine within your lifespan what you deem is right. Somebody said everybody lies, as if it's no big deal. Maybe with your morality it ain't, but the Bible says, all liars, black lies, white lies, big lies, little liars, they all have their part in the lake of fire. Where does that person that think a lie is no big deal based on their morality, where does that person have it written that abomination? How can a person think so lightly of a thing while another person desire to please God to the point where they'd rather die? And the Bible says whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give it thanks to him. Give it thanks to God and the Father by him. So you tell me how you're going to lie in Jesus. Somebody said I can cheat on my girlfriend, but I'm not married to her. That's his morality. But the girlfriend's morality. See a problem here? The scripture, the Bible, speaks clearly about the day where all fornicators will be judged. The problem with morality is it was born with you and it's going to die with you. During your own lifetime, 
You can't hold your own morality to a high enough standard to comply without consequences. Okay, let me tell you what I mean. If you decide I'm never going to steal, if your morality says stealing is wrong, and you go and steal something, and you don't get caught, what punishment did you reserve for yourself? If you decide I'm not going to cuss anymore, what are you going to do if you slip up? What's wrong with the words of God? It's something that you don't like. Anymore. There's something in the word of God that conflicts with your morality. No society can exist. No culture can prevail. No family can live in tranquility if you break 10 of the 10 commandments. That's a fact. Would you ever want to live in a society where there's no penalty for thieves? Unless you're a thief. What if your morality says it's okay to steal because times are hard? I gotta do what I gotta do, right? What about the victim of your morality? Would you like to live in a society where there's no penalty for murder? Unless you have a legitimate reason for murder. We've all seen the video on YouTube circling around for years. There's a guy, he had a babysitter. I'm on YouTube, so I have to say allegedly he raped his son. Within the father's morality, that justifies him shooting a guy, point blank rage, as the police was escorting him to through the airport. Y'all remember seeing that video? He shot him point blank rage. Within his morality, that's okay. The jury, within their morality, they said he's not guilty. You see, the father thought the babysitter had his same moral. He thought the babysitter wouldn't sodomize his little boy. The babysitter's morality, his morality dictates as long as I don't get caught. What if touching a child is wrong all the time? I'm talking about wrong beyond your morals. Your morals will allow you to do whatever you want to do when it's convenient. What's wrong with a foundation? What's wrong with a structure? What's wrong with the word of God and the desire to obey it? What's wrong with a person that got such a desire to obey the word of God that they would be hurt if they disobeyed? You see the video that man left his girlfriend in a burning car. He didn't see nothing wrong with him. I can't help her nothing I can do. That's his morality. Your blueprints and your structure as you navigate through this labyrinth called life must include ethics more powerful than you. It must exist before you in order to exclude you from being sovereign. You're a good human based on what? You're a great person based on what? You did the right thing based on what? Challenge yourself with something bigger than you. Let's say you were born on an abandoned island. You determine you're the fastest runner in the world. What happens when you come to the mainland and meet other runners? What you thought within yourself meant nothing. You could have lived and died on that island thinking whatever you want, but when faced with foundational truths, what's wrong with a foundation? What's wrong with a structure? Isaiah 30 says, verse 10, which say to the seer, see not. This being, this is people saying, don't look at what I'm doing. And it says, and to the prophets, prophesy not us, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth. Prophesy deceits. Can you believe there's people in this world that believe if, if the word don't line up with me, then let me be. That's what it's all about, right? I'm going to set up my own life and everything else have to line up with what I set up. Romans 15, 4, for whatsoever things are written aforetime, before your time, were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. That's how we have hope, through the scripture. That's how we have comfort, through those words written aforetime. People are under attack. Psychiatrists are booked to the max. Suicides are at an all-time high. Divorces are at record rates. But guess what? We have a common denominator. Who is the common denominator? I never lied to my kids and told them there's a generous white man trespassing 
breaking and entering, and placing lovely gifts under the tree. I never lied to my kids and told them that bunnies lay eggs. And you gotta go find them at Salmonella producing room temperature. I want my kids to know the difference between reality and fairy tale. I want them to know that there's a real enemy called Satan. Whatever religion you choose, whatever spirituality you come up with, whether you want to accept it or not, you have an adversary that's committed to your demise. This adversary does not have your best interest in it. The smoke that came out of that thing that you burned, you don't care about it. He don't care about the, the candle you light for St. Thomas. He doesn't care about you making an invisible cross on your fingers on your chest or driving around with a dream catcher. All of your stones, all of your crystals don't matter to him. He doesn't care about you worshiping a statue that you think is. None of that changes the blueprints that the enemy has for your life. I don't care who you are or what culture you come from, we all share a common enemy. We all wake up to that battlefield that's going on in your mind, fighting for sanity, fighting for peace, fighting to make the right decisions, fighting against our past, fighting against our urges. The Bible tells you not to be carried away or carried about with different and strange doctrines. It's written. It is here within your mind that the devil enters the octagon about you. But it's also he that he's still forced to obey the rules. What rules? The rules written in the Bible. That's the only rules he has to obey. The devil only has to obey the rules written in the Bible. Why do you think the Lord's weapon of choice is load out? Why do you think the Lord's weapon of choice was the word of God? What did he do when he was attacked by the same comment? He ran and smoked some weed. Natural. Okay. He ran and got something to drink to take the edge off, right? No, no, no. He turned to visual stimulation for TV or social media to create a full escape from reality. No, he said, it is written. Written where? In that book your grandma used to carry under her armpit. In that book we don't like because it's too restrictive. In that book that has boundaries not set by you. The Bible predicted this day was coming. The Bible told us that people would be turning away from God and turning to new religions, new faiths, new spiritualities. The Bible says they sacrificed unto devils, not God, to gods whom they knew not. The new God, new gods that came newly up, whom your ancestors didn't care about. You might be looking for a new way to get to God since you've been hurt by the church. You might be looking for another way since you don't like the pathway God has set up. But I come to tell you, there ain't no other way. I'm so glad there is a pathway of salvation. Thank you, God. I'm so glad God did all the heavy lifting. I'm so glad God set everything up. What if he didn't? What if there wasn't a pathway? What would you do in a world of turmoil if there was no way out? What if there wasn't a way to get to your creator? What if there was no life after death? Can you tell me this? Yeah. Apostle Paul, he's on his way to somewhere, or on a hill somewhere. And he's walking and he sees an altar with a stupid message to the unknown God. Paul said, but because you're calling the unknown God, you ignorantly worship him. To the unknown God? You worship a God that you don't even know. One that newly came up. One that your ancestors never heard of. Today, I want you to know who God is. Not the God of your pastor. Not the God of your parents. I want you to meet him for yourself in this lifetime. I don't want you to tell me about what you heard about him. I want you to hear him and tell me about him. Say that again. I don't want you to tell me what you heard about God. I want you to hear from God and then tell me about it. This is a God that will talk back to you. Talk back to you? Yes, he will. He'll walk with you. He'll protect you. He'll bless you. He'll give you what you don't deserve. And he'll forgive you. You know how easy it is to get forgiveness from God? You start by asking him. This God we serve is a forgiving God. Oh, yes, he is. He has power to forgive you that you ain't seen.
He'll let you slide. He'll sleep it under the rug. He'll forget all about it. He's faithful and he'll never bring it up again. None of these other things you run into can offer you. You're missing out if you leave this place without being forgiven. Just talk to him. Why is it so hard to say I'm sorry? Why is it so hard for humans to say I'm sorry? Why is it so hard for you to say, Lord, I messed up. Give me one more chance. You gotta talk to him because he's faithful and he's just. Forgive us. What if there wasn't a pathway? What if Christ failed? What if his blood didn't prevail till this day? What would you do? You can't come up with your own way of getting to a sovereign God. You can't present your morality to God Almighty and demand he accept it. You can't make up your own way to salvation. Straight and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. But that's not you. But you found it. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way. The word of God is the way. Stay on this way. If you got off the pathway, get back on it. Don't turn back. Don't vacillate. Don't accept a new doctrine. Know your God. Know your God. Don't wait any longer. Don't wait any longer. Because there is good news in this. There's hope in this. There's guarantees at the end. What's at the end? I'm so glad you asked. Jesus. Jesus is at the end. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and Omega. Jesus. Jesus is the first and the last. Follow Jesus. Come back to Jesus. That's why he says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face. How long? Forevermore. Not heaven. Don't let heaven be your goal. Crave God. Crave being in his glory. Crave hearing his voice. Develop a strong desire to be wrapped in his arms. Pick me up, Jesus. And hold me close. Hallelujah. Then the Bible says, he'll wipe the tears from your eyes. Tears of sorrow, gone. Tears of heartache, gone. Tears of pain, sickness. It will all be over. No more deaths. No more funerals. This world is full of disease. But over there, it'll all be over. You'll get a brand new body. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Hallelujah. This pathway leads you to a place where there's no more bills. The stuff you consume with now, you won't, you won't be overwhelmed with that anymore. Have you accepted this plan of salvation? This one. The one that lines up with the Bible. Are you on the beaten path that lines up with the Bible? Well, I got news for you. He that keepeth Israel never sleeps nor slumbers. He is coming back just like he said he would. He doesn't lie. He's coming back. We're his inheritance. We're the apple of his eye. He hasn't forgotten about you. He hears your prayers. He sees your tears. And he's coming back just like he said he would. Why is he coming back? So you can worship him in person. So you can tell him to his face, Lord, I love you. I adore you. You are my heart's desire. Lord, you're perfect. You're holy. You're magnificent. Lord, you're mighty. Everything the devil does is to push you off this path. That's all he has to do. That's all he does. You survive this long. Hold on a little while longer. God will show up and deliver. He's coming back. Don't get distracted by stupid stuff. Come back to Jesus. He said you're welcome to come back to him. He said you're welcome to come back to the God that you know. The God that you know. The God that's real. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I took this prayer three some years ago. I'm so glad one Saturday morning my soul told God yes. I'm so glad the real God heard me. If I don't wake up in the morning, everything is going to be all right. If you don't see me no more, it's all right. God got me faded. If I end up in that cruel grave, it's all right. Because I know who God is, and I serve him, and I worship him. I'm not running to any new found doctrine, the comedic community. I'm not, I don't care about burning sage. 
I'm trying to worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on back. Come on back. Don't be running to this new stuff. Come on back. I know you got hurt. I know you got a problem with the church. I know you have a lot of reasons and most of them are legitimate. But don't run it off to other stuff. Don't run away from God. Run to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You woke up in a world that is in turmoil. But there is a plan. There is a pathway to salvation. Thank you. Trust me with your, with your forgiveness. Yeah, yeah.